it was about four years ago, roughly, that uh, there was a clash at the box office between uh, Sri Vikram Srinivas Alavai Kunta Purangu with uh, Sari Lerni Kebaru, a Mahesh Babu star. History has it that uh, both films made good news at the box office. But Ala Vaikuntapuram went on to be a super mega hit. And it clearly was ahead of the Mahesh Babu star. Both actors have their own space, their own fan following. And I think like all other actors, both of them are also guilty of building on their image as stars at the cost of their repute as actors. This is not a new problem. This is almost a pandemic with Tollywood where actors consistently behave in a larger than life stance status at the cost of their reputation as artists and actors. Their simple defense is that this is what the market wants. Actors who are stars are not star enough if they are not able to tell a filmmaker that they sell, not their roles. And it is this recognition, this identification that is crucial for an actor. Until he does that, and unless he crosses that threshold of establishing himself as an actor outside the gimmicks of what stardom brings with it, no star is a true born. They're all living on props. And these props are largely dependent on that Friday mood of an unpredictable audience. Three consecutive days, big films out in the market. One starring Nagarjuna, one starring Venkatesh, and one starring Mahesh Babu. Mahesh Babu's film, Guntur Karan, takes the first bow, takes the first go at the box office. One would have thought it would have the beginner's advantage. It does not. From the theatres I watch the movie, the numbers aren't filling the piece. Theatres, and this is indeed unfortunate because huge amount of money goes into the making of these kind of films. But in a way, when a creative man like Trivikram Srinivas throws in so much of money, effort, startup into a film, are we not asking this question as to how responsible these people are? Animal or Reddy. Today the filmmaker is cocky enough to come around and say there's no part of mine. These are all critics. Forget them. They don't matter. To me, the jingle at the box office matters and that's all. The justification of money and money alone and success alone is not the hallmark of a filmmaker. It is the hallmark of, a, of somebody who's in the billion market. Be that as it may and without having to go into the controversy as to whether a filmmaker or a film actor or a film star have any social responsibility, we need to look at Guntur Karu, even by the minimal standards of social non-responsibility. I think this is a pathetic film. Running for about 160 minutes, can't we make smaller films? Why would you make a film for 159 minutes? And what do you do for 159 minutes? Cut half the fights out. Cut half the stunts out. And see how much of the film remains. Almost not nothing. 
There are two, three aspects that run through most of these films and this is no exception. One is that deep rooted is a battle. Battle between family members, battle between this family and that family, feuds. Here you have uh, <clears throat> so many artists and characters that you'll have to write it down on the paper. You have Ramya Krishna as Vasundara. She is married to Jaira, who lives with his sister Ishwari Rao, her brother in law Rabu Babu, and the rest. There's an attack on their mill by two brothers or friends, Marx and Lenin, their names, some, some justification to get in Marx and Lenin. Lenin is Sunni, Marx is Jagapati Babu. Obviously, Jagapati Babu will not smile even with a gun on his head or an axe on his neck. You start off the film and you have people killing one another with an axe. There's a blast, there's fire, there's ruckus, there's destruction, there's tragedy. For the next near three hours. This film is completely meaninglessly violent with onion layers for villains and villains and villains. You have somebody called Gillette and Ajay comes in and makes a performance. Then you have uh, these two brothers, then you have Prakash Raj playing the bigger one. You have Rao Ramesh tired of this thing and dust. This is, these are the two basic elements of the film which are crying to work outside their temples. Disputes of families, people getting married, parents having ambitions. Come on, which century are we dealing with cinema? The third and the highly objectionable is the manner in which we continue to objectify women. It is very unfortunate that mainstream heroes and heroines continue to make money and are very happy in their luxurious oasis because they get cat calls from their fan following when they make crude comments on women. Come on, Mr. Mahesh Babu. You have some social responsibility. You have a repute of your own. If, if people catcalling when you talk about a woman's anatomy pleases you, then I think calling yourself an artist, a star, a public personality requires a revisit. I'm sure most of you may not watch my channel, but if this work can reach out through whatever method, it is time People in public life realize that they are living in glass houses. Their actions are emulated. Today, if rape, offense against women, crude comments against women, the male vertical fiction is perpetuated in our society, more so in feudal backgrounds. Let's blame our cinema for it substantially because if you do these things, you are an aligned person. Really, really sad. Is there anything nice in the movie? Ramya Krishna is dignified. She carries herself with consummate ease. Her designer saris, her wardrobe is worth the watch. Then there is Rao Ramesh. I really wonder how an actor can make dignity even in a film of such certified crap. He stands alone, stands great. Amazing actor. Venera Kishore has a few moments worth a smile or a giggle. Everyone else is not worth talking about. Prakash Raj has. His makeup is pathetic. A great effort to make him look much older than he is shows 
and then you have uh, Sai Lila. The only thing that can be said in favor of Sai Lila is in one piece. Song, she's wearing a very nice pink kurta. That's about all that can be said positively about Sai Lila. When it comes to Mahesh Babu, it's an extremely disappointing outing from him. Again, he's functioning within his own templates, those cheeky comments, those uh, poker face look statements. Artists who live in the comfort of their inertia are bound to be time wrapped and become irrelevant sooner than they would care. That probably is why Actors like Mahesh Babu, notwithstanding the huge success they make in a film, also have to combat the Friday fear. What about my next film? Will it be accepted? Someday, from the archives, from a time capsule, civilization will judge Telugu cinema very poorly for its irresponsible manner of projecting normal life, of projecting sex, and projecting the male vertical as some superior standalone species and heroes who are larger than life. All this put together in a combination that is toxic from the start to the finish is what Guntu Mirchi is about. You have the appetite for this, go for it. So far as I'm concerned, I kicked myself for having to sing the movie. Thank you Abhinav and Tatu for uh, helping me out with the video and hope uh, my colleagues do comment on the issues raised in this review about the film and factors connected with it. So long. Bye-bye.